You ever see a headline about a brand new V8 and feel that jolt in your chest? Finally, something for us? Then you watch the sizzle reel and realize half of what they're bragging about isn't power, it's software. You're not crazy. You're feeling the gap between the V8 you want and the V8 the industry needs to survive regulation, cost pressure, and warranty math. GM's Gen 6 V8 is the perfect case study in that gap. The marketing says, all new architecture, more efficient, cleaner, future ready, sounds heroic. But once you pull back the curtain, the truth is simple and a little uncomfortable. Gen 6 isn't built to win dyno charts. It's built to win spreadsheets, fleet averages, warranty claims, manufacturing complexity. That's the war this engine is designed to fight. And if you know how that war is fought, you can decide whether Gen 6 is your ally or a very expensive compromise dressed as progress. Let's go to work. Here's what everyone expects when they hear new GM small block. Bigger bore, angrier cam, more compression, meaner soundtrack, simple bones. What you're actually getting is a control system platform with pistons attached. The core block and crank still carry the DNA, you know. Good geometry, short push rods, compact package. But the real brain is wrapped around it. Dual injection, wide authority cam phasing, smarter cylinder deactivation, thermally managed exhaust, and a powertrain control module that behaves less like a hall monitor and more like a chess player. Why? Because the villain isn't Ford or Ram this time. The villain is physics measured by policy, idle emissions, cold starts, real-world drive cycles that punish old-school calibration tricks, warranty auditors who don't care how it sounds at a Cars & Coffee. They care whether it lights the catalyst in 12 seconds on a January morning at 6,000 feet. That is the battlefield. That's where Gen 6 was engineered to win. Let's break the truth into five pieces. You'll never look at the spec sheet the same way. Truth number one, the big promise isn't horsepower, it's heat management. Everyone says more efficient, but what they're really saying is, we can control heat better. Emissions live and die on how fast you heat the catalysts and how long you keep them lit. Gen 6 is built like a thermal funnel. Expect low mass manifolds, tighter packaging to keep exhaust energy hot, and coolant routing that prioritizes block warmup over passenger comfort in the first minute. You'll see split cooling strategies, electronically staged thermostats, and oil temp targets that move with the drive cycle. What does that do for you? Cold starts feel cleaner, less raw, fewer fuel-rich hiccups. What do you lose? A bit of that old crisp idle character and some underhood service access. You'll also see stop-start that actually works without shaking your fillings out because the rotating assembly and mounts have been tuned for micro-events instead of wide-open glory. Payoff. Lower fuel consumed during warm-up, real-world plus one to plus two miles per gallon in mixed driving, and fewer warranty dollars burned on after-treatment. Cost. The engine starts to feel less like a blunt instrument and more like a sealed system with rules. Truth number two. Cylinder deactivation isn't a party trick anymore. It's a strategy. You've lived through the early AFM slash DFM era. Lifter collapse memes, camshafts chewed to confetti, owners deleting systems out of frustration. Gen 6 tackles that history with three converging changes. Hardware simplification at the tappet, fewer oil-switched components per bank, redesigned oil galleries, and more forgiving lifter geometry. The lesson was painful. Fewer moving targets, fewer failure modes. Combustion-aware cut patterns. It's not shut off every other cylinder anymore. The controller chooses patterns to avoid torsional spikes and keep exhaust energy steady for clean catalyst temps. Predictive relight. The second you hint at throttle, the engine is already bringing cylinders online preemptively, masking the transition. You won't feel it. The drive shaft will. Result? On the highway at light load, you'll sit in leaner, low-pumping loss states for long stretches without the old NVH penalties. If you tow, it stays out of deactivation altogether and behaves like a full-time V8 because the strategy knows the mass behind you. Payoff. Measurable cruise efficiency without the I-can-hear-it-hunting annoyance. Cost. When it breaks, it's not a $90 lifter and a Saturday. It's a calibrated system. Parts plus a tech who can read the intent encoded in the strategy. Truth number three. Dual injection isn't marketing. It's a carbon and knock solution. Direct injection gave us power and efficiency, 
then handed us intake valve carbon and ash-filled combustion chambers on a silver platter. Gen 6 leans harder into the fix, DI for high load precision, port injection for valve washing, and mixture prep at low to medium loads. Why do you care? Your truck idles cleaner, transitions smoother, and avoids the $600 walnut blast every 50,000 miles routine if you run quality fuel and oil and keep intervals honest. There's a second win here, spark advance under knock limited conditions. On hot days, low RPM, heavy throttle, exactly where trucks live, port assist helps cool the charge and keeps timing closer to ideal. That translates to grunt you can feel without resorting to boost. It's not sexy on a poster, but it's relentless on a grade with a trailer. Payoff, more stable torque in ugly conditions, less long-term carbon drama. Cost, two fuel systems to maintain, two failure points. The odds are low, the complexity is real. Truth number four, the cam is the quiet hero, and it's not about peak lift. If you're looking for the wild cam card, you'll miss what changed. Authority, Gen 6 cam phasing lives on a wider leash. Early intake closing and late exhaust closing let the controller shape effective compression and bleed pumping losses without killing torque. At idle, it's calm and catalyst friendly. At mid-range under load, it rotates into the meat of the airflow curve, trading EGR for cam overlap to keep combustion temps sane. Translation, it feels bigger than it measures. The torque comes in earlier and flatter. The part throttle response gets that old school small block snap and yet the tailpipe stays happy. You don't brag about it at a barbecue, but you will notice your trans isn't hunting because the engine holds a gear like it means it. Payoff, torque, where trucks live, without the smell of raw fuel at idle. Cost, more reliance on clean oil and accurate phaser control. Skip maintenance, pay later. Truth number five, serviceability is evolving from nuts and bolts to state and intent. This is the part nobody wants to hear. The Gen 6 looks familiar, but it behaves like software. A misfire isn't just a coil, it might be a state transition fault where deactivation relighting got out of sync with injection timing under a thermal event. The fix isn't raw skill with a ratchet, it's interpreting the engine's decisions in data. That doesn't make it fragile, it makes it transparent, not to the right hands. Independents who learn the logic will thrive. Those who refuse will call it unreliable when it's really unknown. For owners, that means picking shops like you pick tires by the pattern that fits your terrain. Payoff. Once diagnosed correctly, many ghost issues are software states, not hardware carnage. Cost. The days of guessing are over. Time is money. Bad guesses are expensive. Now let's talk about the question you actually care about. Is the Gen 6 better or just different? The answer depends on what you do and how long you keep it. If your life looks like commute, errands, weekend trailer once a month, Gen 6 feels brilliant. You get a stout mid-range, long-leg highway economy, and a drivetrain that stays calm in traffic. Your total cost lives in routine maintenance, not dramatic failures, as long as you treat oil intervals like gospel. If your life looks like 12,000 pounds on the hitch every other weekend, you'll love how the torque sits right where you need it, and you'll meet the limits of thermal happiness on long grades. That's not weakness, that's honesty. Gen 6 is built to manage heat, not defy it. Keep the cooling stack clean, mind gear selection, and it will repay you with consistency, not fireworks. If you're the 200,000 mile keeper, here's the hard truth. Complexity is no longer optional in modern V8s. The way you win is habits. Oil at 5K, fuel quality that doesn't make the knock sensors cry intake filters that aren't beige fossils, and a relationship with a shop that can read data like a second language. You'll spend less over 10 years than the internet thinks, and more than your nostalgia hoped. Let's put numbers on it, because this channel doesn't deal in vibes. Compared to a late Gen 5 under similar truck duty, a healthy Gen 6 should give you plus one to two miles per gallon mixed, a flatter torque plateau between 1,800 to 3,500 revolutions per minute, and fewer carbon-related service events if you follow intervals. Over five years at average mileage, that's about $1,500 to $2,200 in fuel saved at today's prices, money that offsets the added complexity you'll read about on forums. Skip maintenance, and those savings evaporate into a single angry repair order. That's the ledger. So, 
What exactly did GM expose? Not a scandal, a priority stack. Horsepower sells posters, thermal strategy, deactivation logic, and dual injection keep fleets legal, owners happy, and warranty lines short. The brochure won't say that. The calibration will. There's one more truth the spec sheet won't tell you, sound. The small block heartbeat survives, but its edges are rounded. Start-stop softens the first thump. Deactivation erases the drumbeat in cruise. Cam authority reshapes the idle. You still know it's there. It's just learned manners. Some of you will call that soulless. Others will call it grown-up. Both are right, depending on what you want from a daily driver that also moves your life around. Let's talk ownership moves that make Gen 6 yours, not the dealers. Oil is strategy. Use the grade the calibration expects, not internet folk wisdom. Sheer stability and deposit control matter more than brand wars, 5,000 miles. Set a reminder and stop negotiating with yourself. Air matters. A clean filter isn't a suggestion. High load plus muddled MAF readings equals fuel trims that aren't where the strategy expects. Spend $30, save $300. Fuel quality isn't snake oil. If you live in heat or altitude, the knock margin from better fuel pays you back in kept timing and cooler exhaust. You'll feel it towing. Software updates aren't the enemy. Cal revisions exist because real-world data beats bench assumptions. If your truck's behavior changes with a reflash, that's the system getting smarter. Document the before slash after and move forward. Pick your shop for fluency, not proximity. Ask what tools they use to read GM data. If they say, we don't need that, you've already heard the bill growing. So is Gen 6 the V8 you dreamed of? If your dream was forever simple, no, the world moved. But if your dream was a V8 that earns its keep in 2025 and beyond, pulls hard, sips when it can, behaves in traffic, toes with composure, and doesn't turn the tailpipe into a threat to the warranty department, then yes, it's the adult version of the small block idea. Compact, efficient, durable enough, and smarter than it looks. Here's my bottom line, no fluff. If you want drama, buy the poster. If you want a partner, learn the rules of the game the engineers actually played. The Gen 6 isn't pretending to be a race motor. It's a business class V8 built to pass tests you'll never read and win battles you'll only feel when nothing goes wrong. And that's the twist the headline won't give you. The truth about the Gen 6 V8 isn't that GM found secret horsepower in the block. It's that they found reliability in the behavior and bet the farm that you'd rather have torque on the on-ramp, manners in the neighborhood, clean emissions at dawn, and a fuel bill that doesn't insult you than 10 more peak horsepower you'll never use. If that's not what you think a V8 should be, fair. There are other ways to be loud. But if you want a truck that goes to work every day in a world that keeps moving the goalposts, this is how you stay on the field. You came for a scandal. What you got is a strategy. You came for an engine. What you got is a system. Now you know what exposed really means. Choose accordingly.